a little bit of background. I was a 20-year-old female at the time. I moved in with my uncle in San Antonio, Texas with the agreement that I didn't have to pay rent as long as I helped him out with chores and my cousins. I got a job at a super-known coffee chain downtown close to the touristy part of the area. We had a lot of regulars and a lot of homeless coming in and out. I felt relatively safe though because I got to know the people there and it was almost always a lot of foot traffic. I used to even take walks after work in the area, especially since I was super close to the river walk. Skipped to a couple months into the job and I was friends with everyone I worked with. We were all super close. On this particular day, it was one of my co-workers last day. There were about three guys who had been there almost all morning. They hadn't bought anything and were just hanging out which was not unusual for my location. On my break I decided to walk down to a nearby drugstore so I can get a farewell card and maybe a small gift for said co-worker. I walked out and put my earphones in and before I could press play I heard the door open behind me and footsteps following behind. Whoever it was caught up to me and started walking beside me matching my pace exactly. I turned to look and it was one of the guys that had been there all morning. He was a bit taller than me and reminded me a lot of Lakey Stanfield. He tried to ask for my number and I kindly told him no. He persisted and I with a short temper told him to F off. He stopped and stared at me in surprise as I don't look like someone who speaks up or it would be rude. He stood there as I walked away and by the time I went back they were gone, I proceeded to tell my co-workers about the encounter and we laughed it off. I thought that would be the end of it. I was wrong. Every shift after that he would already be there just hanging out or would walk in mid-shift. Sometimes with somebody else and sometimes by himself. I assumed he was just another homeless person because how else was he always able to be around? My shifts were sporadic. Some days I opened some days I closed some days I worked mid but it didn't matter he was always there. At that point I started feeling paranoid. I would always catch him staring in my direction. He never ordered anything, never talked to me and luckily wouldn't follow me. He would just sit there, watching me. I started mentioning it to my co-workers and they started noticing it too. One of my team leaders would help me out by sending me to wash dishes in the back or organize the cooler. My co-workers would also try and place themselves to try and block me from his view. I started feeling uncomfortable at work. Sometimes when I closed a co-worker would walk me to my car before heading home themselves. Or if I didn't close they would walk me to my car and turn around and head back to work. Then one day when he was just staring, I was working the register that day. He walked up and ordered water. I asked for his name for his order. I now had his first name just in case. He took his water and sat down. I had mentioned him before to my manager but because he hadn't really done anything we couldn't do anything besides noted in the manager book. The next day I worked with my manager. It was him, two other co-workers, and me. I told them I had to go to the bathroom real quick. There were two bathrooms right next to each other but sort of hidden from the coffee bar and register and they weren't gender specific. I walked around the bar to the lobby area. I had to pass his table and walk down the lobby to get to the bathrooms. I noticed him get up before going inside the bathroom. I sat down to do my business when someone rattled the knob. I shouted out that it was occupied but whoever it was kept rattling the door until I finished. When I opened the door no one was there and walking back I noticed him adjusting back into his chair. I was super freaked out and told my boss. He couldn't tell him anything because we had no proof that it was him. Later that shift he got up and picked up a coffee from the pickup area. My boss assumed he had ordered it and let him take it. I told him it wasn't and that it wasn't even his name. My boss used this as an opportunity to tell him if he does something like that again he can't come back. The man apologized and actually stuck to the rules every day after that. He went back to just watching me. Cut to Valentine's Day. One of my team leaders and I would be scheduled to work certain Thursdays after close to deep cleaning the store. We would stay until 1am. This was one of those Thursdays. We were almost done and I had to clean the bathrooms as one of the last chores. I finished and as I walked out of the bathroom I saw him peeking in with both his hands pressed to the window eyes wide just staring at me with this super intense look. I froze for a second just staring back. I notice on one of his palms that is pressed to the window, a purple foam heart. He doesn't move at all. I freak out and Steve goes back into the bathroom. I shout, Hannah. Hannah. He's here. He's back. She barely hears me through the music we were blasting. Hannah was the team lead who would help hide me from him so she knew the huge fear I had towards him. She walks towards the bathroom shouting back, what are you saying? What's going on? As soon as she gets close she sees him. I told her again, he's here. 
he's watching me, she started shouting through the window, you need to leave. If you don't leave we're calling the police, I step out a little to see if he'll leave and he's ignoring her and his eyes are fixated in my direction. I step back into the bathroom and my lead continues to shout at him to leave and threatens him with the police. About five minutes pass and he realizes that I'm not stepping out until he leaves so he does. The next day I was my lead and I told my manager I wanted to file a police report. He told me not to wait until he talked to his boss. He showed up again that day but I was only there to talk to my manager and leave right after. When I got home a friend convinced me to call the cops. So I text my boss that I don't care what he or his boss says. I'm scared and I'm gonna file that report. I dial 911 and tell them a summarized version. They tell me they're going to send someone to where I live to take the official report. The two officers were so nice and supportive. I told them my whole story and how my boss didn't feel the need to get cops involved since I wasn't harmed. The officers told me that I should have called right away and defended me saying they could get him for harassment. I thank them and they tell me that if he shows up to dial 911 so they can take him in for trespassing and harassing. I think that day my manager banned him and warned him because he never showed up to the coffee shop again. A few months later when I was comfortable again with downtown I went out with some friends to walk around. We were close to where I worked and as we rounded a corner I saw him and so I ducked into a little corner store and my friends followed. I told them I saw him and they kept an eye out. Once he was out of view we left the store and that was the last time I saw him. So creepy coffee shop stalker, let's not meet again. I've never really shared this experience with anyone except my mom, a few close friends and my boyfriend, but I don't think that they really realize how much this still impacts me. I recently discovered this subreddit so I'm hoping sharing my experience will lift a weight, if you will. I worked a fairly entry-level office job in a mixed commercial slash industrial area in my community. Because of the nature of most of the work in the area, mostly manufacturing and construction type jobs, it wasn't uncommon to see people walking around with canvas pants, covered in oil, and being a little dingy looking. I carpooled with my mom since she worked nearby, and that particular day my mom had called me to tell me she was going to be about a half hour late picking me up. Instead of waiting at my work for her, I decided that I would walk to the coffee shop nearby and wait there for her. It was late in the afternoon, around 4 p.m., so it was very quiet. I was the only customer in the shop when I sat down at a table to read a newspaper. A few minutes after I sat down, a very handsome middle-aged guy walked in a few minutes behind me. He was very attractive and had a very comfortable charm to him, but it really struck me how clean he looked for the area, especially wearing overalls and work boots. Didn't think too much of it at first honestly, so when he asked me if he could sit with me and chat while he waited for his own drive, I said okay. We actually had a nice conversation for a little while, until he started asking personal questions about me. They were not very specific questions, but in hindsight it seems really weird to me. At the time though, perhaps it was naive, I just kept talking even though I started getting a really strange vibe. I started to get really uncomfortable when I asked him what he did for a living. He told me he worked at a nearby manufacturing place, and that he had been working there for about a year. He then told me it was the first job he ever had so he was really excited about continuing his career there. Remember, this guy is middle-aged. Not only what he said, but how he said it, struck me as so strange. This became my first bold and waving real red flag to GTFO. I instantly had a moment where I was like, wait a sec, what middle-aged man is only one year into his first job? Especially in an area that can't really be shrugged off as prolonged education, rich parents, etc. To me, that screamed a recent prison release. On top of that, for him to be so clean despite him saying where he worked, nothing was adding up. I immediately started texting my mom under the table and said that I was really uncomfortable and she needed to come ASAP. I continued talking to him like nothing was weird, but deep down I was really regretting telling him anything about myself in case he followed me. So when my mom pulled into the parking lot I quickly jumped out of there and hopped in the car. As she pulled out of the parking lot, I see him leave the coffee shop and hop into his own car. Now, remember in our conversation he had told me he was waiting for a drive if I had been paying attention to him as he came and I would have realized that it was a lie and he drove there himself and would have avoided the whole situation. Obviously I'm really freaking out. I quickly explained to my mom what was going on and she sped off down the street. Look behind us, who was there? Guy in his car. She purposely ducked and dove down all sorts of bizarre streets and went in circle after circle. 
he followed us for close to 30 minutes before giving up. I don't know why I didn't report my experience to the police. I just was so shocked that something like that would happen. Went on with my life and shook it off as if nothing had happened. Fast forward about a week and my mom picks up a newspaper only to find that on the front page there is a picture of this one insane very handsome man. He had kidnapped a woman and shoved her into the trunk of her own car, drove her, while she was in the trunk, about 200 miles to another city, forced her to take all her money out of her bank account and then abandoned her there with no wallet and no vehicle. If not for my mom, I could have been so screwed. Fortunately the woman was not physically injured or sexually assaulted but I cannot imagine spending hours in the trunk of your own car not knowing what someone was going to do to you. It's been about seven years since this happened and I still have some serious trust issues with strangers. I didn't work in that area much longer, it became too difficult for me. While I did work there, I had previously gone to that particular coffee shop daily during my lunch breaks, and still, to this day I have never been back there. First off, I just want to state that I changed names in this story and omitted them entirely when necessary. This happened this morning at about 10 a.m. The backstory. Working full-time as a full-time student leaves me with very little time for me under normal circumstances. Classes just ended not long ago and lots of folks have left my university town to go back home for the holidays. I work in a coffee shop so people going back home means that not only am I catching a break from school right now, the work is usually super slow as well and this has been beyond beneficial for my mental state. The story. I usually reserve the use of marijuana for times when my UC is flaring or to gain back appetite lost for the same reason, but as I somehow ended up working 9 to 5 Monday through Friday this week with the entire weekend off, a nice treat to get two off in a row, and me recovering from a mild hangover from last night, I figured I could probably smoke before lunch, play some vidya and be useful by the time lunch needs to be made. I roll one, slide the balcony door over, and smoke. This is fine, I tell myself. I deserve this after a long week, some time to myself. I have nothing to do today so I'm sure being high in the middle of the day won't be an issue. I don't have to see anyone today. After patting myself on the back for a few minutes more than needed, I slide the door shut and huddle up in a blanket on the couch. I was the only one awake in my apartment this morning and I could hear someone in the hallway. All of a sudden there are three hurried knocks at my door, and I bolt up. Oh freak did I forget someone was coming to meet me I think as I looked through the peephole to see a middle-aged man with Homer Simpson hair, transition lenses, and a handful of gold-colored wrapped presents. He's also freaking around on his phone when I look out, and I see the unit directly across the hall is getting dominoes and the driver is standing in their doorway. Not feeling uneasy considering the audience, I open the door. This man greets me and starts to walk in. I stand firm in the doorway, and once he realizes I'm not moving and he's trying to slide past between myself and a lamp which he nearly knocks over, he sticks his hand out. I'm Terry, so I shake his hand back firm while staring him in the eye still confused. Keep in mind that though I was trying to look tough, I'm a fair-skinned blonde man with cracked lips, and my pajamas and eyes are definitely red and glossy. I'm her father, he tells me. I thought I remembered our roommate mentioning that her father is a tall black man, and this gentleman was not only white but probably standing at about five foot solid. Oh you're Linda's father, important that I spoke her name? Let me go let her know you're here, hold on, and I make my way down the hallway to knock on her bedroom door, next to my fiancé in a shared room. I go and knock and say there's a visitor for her, and by the time I knock he is right behind me, still freaking about with his phone while holding those presents in his hands. Now I have to do the crappy awkward slide by him in my own apartment. I figured I'd leave them be, he seemed beyond excited to be here to visit his daughter so I made my way back to the living room. Before I can even lay down again, I hear, no, I'm Jane's father, from down the hall. This mother freaker isn't here for my roommate, he's either lost or actively trying to see our apartment, for some reason. I bolt right up and make my way down the hallway, half tripping over things since I'm sitting at about an 8 at this point. As I see him going for the doorknob to my bedroom where my sleeping fiancé lie, I got a little loud, usually not in my character however I'm high on my last day off and there's a stranger possessing far too many red flags about to walk in on the love of my life, and told him that he's in the wrong unit. As I tell him this he must have been dialing on his phone while talking to my roommate because he pulls his phone to his face and goes, I'm here baby, and tries to ignore me. I repeated myself a little louder, 
and he asked where he was. Unit 14, I'll show you the door, and the pizza guy is still there in the doorway when I send him out, Terry asking his phone which floor she's on. That's when I realized this entire thing happened in about two minutes and the pizza guy and I shared a look of solidarity as I locked my door. My roommate came out and we chatted about how freaking weird that is. She laughed since I somehow handled it well from the orbit only medicinal grade marijuana can send you to, and I logged into PlayStation to let the story out to one of my mates over a few matches of Overwatch. Here's where it gets interesting. So around 2pm my fiancé woke up, we both had a long night. I only wound up having a drink or two thanks to my UC and IBS limiting me from going all out but she went back wild before bed and was nursing a bad hangover. I was sober by this point and mostly over the whole ordeal, having had a nap since then and it almost felt like it was a dream. I mention offhand that a man came by, and she says it kind of woke her up, she remembers hearing someone familiar in the apartment. I explain the whole story, and she asks me what he looked like. This could be purely coincidental but I guess about a month ago while I was at work and she was between classes a man fitting the description right down to the transition lenses came beating on the door asking to open up. Unfortunately I forget exactly the details of that encounter and she's sleeping next to me now so I can't ask, but he seems to keep thinking our unit is someone else's, or he's just trying to get a viewing of our fully furnished unit without the tour guide. Leaves a bad taste in my mouth now thinking about it. First time poster. Not too sure how to sign off, but thanks for taking the time to read this. Mostly just wanted it off of my chest, but Terry, let's not meet again, or you might be getting a better view of our apartment than you'd like.